Welcome to the 2020 State of the University Address. How, how many freshmen do we have out here? Raise your hands. All right, so the, you, you may not have experienced one of these yet. Today is not a typical sermon day. What we do is we talk about the university, where we are, where we're going. We share some good news. And so we uh, tweeted out earlier from our university account that we were going to be sharing some important news today. We have a couple of really significant announcements to make. But I want to go ahead and put at ease the rumor that I have heard twice already. That announcement is not that we're going home or stopping classes or anything of that nature. So I, I want you to know if any way possible, Lord willing, if we can do anything we can do, we want to be here and we want to be here face to face and we want to have Cedarville transformational discipleship and academic excellence to continue all the way till November and then we'll go home and eat some turkey and then we'll come back in the spring and do it again. That's the goal, that's the hope, that's the plan. So that's not the announcement today. We have some special guests with us today as well. Joy is here with the kids, and it's cold, and there's Samuel waving in his big blue jacket. Thank you all for being here. Joy, thanks for coming out. We have Paul Dixon, our chancellor. Paul Dixon, would you stand up and wave at everybody right back there? It's great to have him here. I have seen a few of our trustees floating around as well. If you are a trustee and serve on the board of trustees, would you stand up and let us welcome you to the State of the University Address? You know, at homecoming, we often have some retired faculty and staff who come back. I, we're not doing homecoming this year. I don't know if any came back, but if you're here, we want to welcome you. You may be watching online. We may have some parents and some partners of the university that are watching online, some friends. And so we welcome all of you, alumni, friends, parents, grandparents, students who are watching online who thought it was way too cold to be sitting out here in a field. And so... So why don't we do this? Why don't we give each other a round of applause for actually being brave enough to show up outside in a field when it's 45 degrees? Well done. And, and not just show up, but I mean some of you guys welcoming everybody with the suit and uh, I even saw the tie clips. Nicely done. I like it. Well done, guys. I applaud you. Thank you for doing that. So the state of our university... Boy, I'm going to be honest with you. Choosing a word this year was not easy. It was difficult. So I did two. The state of our university is humble and hopeful. I'm going, to, I'm going to walk through that. I'm going to flesh that out for you just a little bit. But as I think about where we are, we can't deny the reality that this is a unique year and this is a unique semester. We learned this morning that President Trump and Melania had tested positive for COVID-19. So would you join me, not right now, but join me in prayer for them, that they would heal well, that others would not have the coronavirus. Our nation is divided. There are worldviews that are competing. It's, it's not just that we're different, it's that we, we actually think differently. We, we actually are seeing a cosmic battle being played out between worldviews that are completely different in their trajectory and what their focus is. And we know that we have the answer with Jesus and the gospel and hope for everyone. And yet when we look out, we see in real time what it looks like to have competing worldviews clashing against one another. We see what it's like when you make this earth your entire idol, your entire home. And when you seek to make this earth the best possible reality ever, we see that clash happening. And so we're humble because we know we can't fix it. There's nothing that I can do that will change this, but we serve a risen Savior who can change it all. I think about the global pandemic. I think about the unrest in cities. I think about the hostility that racism and walls of division have brought to our country. And I'm reminded of 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 7-10. through 10. I think this describes the mood. We have a treasure in these jars of clay to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. We are afflicted in every way, but we are not crushed. We are perplexed, but we're not driven to despair. We are persecuted, but we are not forsaken. 
We are struck down, but we are not destroyed. Always carrying in the body of death so that the life of Jesus may be manifested in our body. This is not all about us. It's all about him. And even while we remain humble, we can remain hopeful because we know the one that holds the future. We have a sermon series we're walking through this year, through Philippians. No Jesus, no joy. Joy, rejoicing, understanding what God has done. And as we walk through this, I'm constantly reminded about the supremacy of Christ. And I'm constantly reminded that even when I look around at a world that's chaotic in its culture, I rejoice in the fact that I serve a Savior that brings peace, that peace of God. And so we see that in Philippians chapter 4, verse 4 through 7. It says to us, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I will say rejoice. So while we look out and remain humble because we don't know all of the certainties, it would be wrong for us not to rejoice in the great things that God has done today. So we're going to do some of that. We're going to talk about his great blessings on Cedarville University. It says, let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything with prayer and supplication, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God that passes all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Let us do that. In every way this semester, let us take our request to God and with thanksgiving, don't forget the thanksgiving, For all the good blessings of God, we take them to God. And then that peace that comes only from God, the peace that the world can't understand, will guard our hearts and our minds and settle us in Christ Jesus. We're tired. Some of us are stressed out. Some of us are absolutely sick of wearing masks and physical distancing and assignments with no break. And I know it's hard. And I want to encourage you that today, we're halfway there. Do you realize today is the halfway point of this semester? You made it halfway. You can get your second wind and make it the remainder of the semester praying to God with thanksgiving and allowing the peace of God that passes all understanding to guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. In this moment in history, we can have peace because this moment in history is a small thing to such a really big God. Let's remember the greatness of the God we serve. We're humble and we're hopeful. We have some guests with us that we're going to celebrate even more tonight, but I want to recognize a few of those guests for you. Dick Blank graduated from Cedarville University in 1982. He is this year's alumnus of the year. Let me tell you a little bit about him and then we'll congratulate him. He graduated with a degree in math and chemistry. He served as a managing partner with Accenture LLP for 10 years and as an advisor to multiple Fortune Global 500 and startup companies. He joined the Leadership Network as well, where he assisted in developing leadership and business skills with many of the largest church pastors all across the country. He's taken them to see CEOs such as those of Walmart and Google. And more recently, he has partnered with Cedarville University as we have created Beyond, a startup accelerator, many other things with that. Dick Blank is passionate about missions and has been on multiple mission trips, planted two churches, helped many other churches. He and his wife, Cindy, have been married for 34 years, and they have four grown daughters and six grandchildren. Tonight, at a banquet, we're going to honor him as our alumnus of the year, but would you join me today in putting your hands together? And Dick, if you're out here, would you stand up and wave at everyone? Every year, it's our tradition as well to name an honorary alumni of the year. Now, this, this honorary alumni, what this really is, is this is somebody that we really, really wish graduated from Cedarville because they just bleed Cedarville. They just carry with them the joy of the Lord and the ethos of Cedarville. So we just claim them. We, we just adopt them in the family and say they're honorary alumni of the year. And this year, the alumna honorary of the year is Mary Ann Stevens. Mary Ann Stevens... Let me tell you a little bit about her, and we'll, 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 uh, we'll clap for her in just a second. Mary Ann Stevens taught art for over 20 years. She is an educator at heart and a person who loves beauty 
I've seen firsthand her passion as she has explained to me the ways bees work and what the pesticides do to the bees and how you have to maintain colonies of bees. She notices the little things in life with great beauty and butterflies, the monarch butterflies, and how she's created a passion in our own home over monarch butterflies as Rachel has done 30 or 40 monarch butterflies and released them out this particular year. I've seen her as we've gone on scuba diving trips talk about the beauty of all the little details under the water with such great excitement. She's a great painter in and of herself. She loves God's beauty. She loves to educate. She brings joy to those around her. She has passions very similarly for Christ and for education and for beauty that represents Cedarville University. She's married to Al Stevens, Cedarville trustee emeriti, and they have given faithfully to support scholarships for many of you. They've made it possible for many just to be able to come to Cedarville. Three of her children graduated from Cedarville as well, and seeing that impact, she continues to give generously to scholarships, and honestly, is one of the best recruiters we have. Marianne Stevens, we love you. You are joy to all of us who know you well. Would you stand and let us congratulate you on being the alumna of the year? Our Distinguished Service Award goes to Dr. Pam Johnson. She has served faithfully at Cedarville University since 1974. You heard as she spoke earlier in chapel this week that she was the first female to bring a terminal degree to Cedarville University. At that point in time, it was Cedarville College, still trying to get accreditation. I, I don't know that it was all because of her, but she brought that terminal degree, and one year later, Cedarville College received accreditation in 1975, and so... For today, at least, we're going to make it all your responsibility, and thank you for getting accreditation, which we all now enjoy. She came to Cedarville and began to serve in many different roles. She's probably served on every committee that we've had. She taught tennis. In fact, if you look back at the sign right over there, you can see that it's the Pamela Dill Johnson courts, along with Murray Burdock. She has served faithfully at this institution with many others. She loves students. She loves education. She also served as professor of kinesiology, and she's currently the dean of undergraduate studies. She was married to Cliff Johnson for nearly 25 years before he went home to be with the Lord in 2018. Dr. Johnson, would you stand up and let us applaud you for your years of faithful service to Cedarville University? Our young alumna of the year is Asherita Chu Chu. She graduated from Cedarville in 2010. I wish I had time to tell you more about what I have learned about her. Yeah, I, I got to, you heard about this in Fewer in Chapel yesterday, but do, do we have anybody that has ever slept under a cubicle in the library? We have a few of you. All right, They're a small club. I sense it developing. She has done the same thing. She majored and graduated with a degree in English, but was unable to make up her mind on exactly what minor to have, so she just had five of them. I don't know if I recommend that or not, but it's turned out really great for her. She's the founder of One Thing Alone Ministries and has reached over a million women with the purpose of encouraging women to find their joy through Jesus, through consistent and creative times in God's Word. She's a best-selling author. She's published seven books, including Full, Food, Jesus, and the Battle for Satisfaction, Quiet Time for Busy Women. She's, she's, she's written many other things as well. So would you join me in congratulating Asherita on being the Young Alumna of the Year? And Asherita, would you stand and wave to everyone with your family there? I want to say something about our faculty. God's goodness to us. The Wall Street Journal publishes a chart of all the schools and how good they are. And I don't often pay a whole lot of attention to the charts and things of that nature, but this one... On student engagement with faculty, Cedarville University ranked number two, tied with Sanford University, just above Harvard University, on students' engagement with their professors, their peers, and their education. We have an incredible faculty at this university, and so to the faculty, let me say thank you. To those faculty members who are also just as tired and stressed out and weary as many of you students are, would you join me in applauding them and expressing your appreciation to the great faculty we have at Cedarville?
All right, freshman class, you are the second largest freshman class in the history of Cedarville University. So we praise God and thank God for the 918 incredible freshmen that he brought to Cedarville this year. So if you're a freshman and you're out here, why don't you stand? And all the rest of us, let's applaud and cheer them on. Welcome them. Overall enrollment, 4,550. That's up 170 students over last year when the national average among private schools is to be down by 3.8%. And so God's goodness to us extends in overall enrollment as we have an amazing group of students studying at Cedarville University. Would you just give yourselves and those around you an applause? Thank you for making Cedarville what it is. All right, this is, this is one, of, one of our good announcements. I am announcing today a new scholarship. We like scholarships. All of us like scholarships. This scholarship came as a recommendation of the Kingdom Diversity Team. The leadership of the university has enthusiastically embraced, the, embraced this, and this new scholarship... It's going to be for an initiative that will start in the fall of 2021 for new students. There'll be application and eligibility information on our website next week. But I'm announcing to you today the beginning of the Dr. DeForia Lane Diversity Scholarship at Cedarville University. <clears throat> Let me tell you a little bit about Dr. Lane. Dr. Lane is a dear friend of the university. She's used her God-given gifts for singing to encourage and ser serve others for her entire life. She has a bachelor's of voice degree from Cincinnati University's uh, College Conservatory of Music and a PhD from Case Western University in music education. Her singing voice can tickle your ears, encourage your soul, and bring a smile to your face all at the same time. She used to be the director of music therapy at University Hospitals Cancer Center, and she wrote a book that you can still find used entitled Music as Medicine, DeForia Lane's Life of Music, Healing, and Faith. She is one of the most encouraging people I have ever met. She's also served on our board of trustees since 1997 for 23 years. And with this scholarship, we want to bring hope and joy and encouragement to many others. God's been good to us in many other ways. He's been good to us in our finances. I always report for those alumni who are wondering, we're building buildings on campus. People are asking, What's, are you just doing that with debt? No, God has been so good to us. We have zero internal debt. We haven't borrowed from ourselves that we have to pay back. We're going to be down at the end of this year to $1.1 million in external debt. Lord willing, we'll pay that completely off this year and be debt-free. That's our goal. If the Lord allows it to happen, I'd love next fall to announce to you that we are completely debt-free. Now, what that does to our composite financial index, which is one indicator of financial health, it means that that composite financial index is off the charts. So in theory, the highest score you can get for an institution is 10, and our score this year is 15.2. God has been good to us. He's been good to us in many different ways. He's been incredibly good to us in our advancement area, and our advancement team has done a phenomenal job. I want to show you just a little bit about what God has done through them and through partners in ministry. This is the giving to Cedarville University. This is where we have faithful partners in ministry that say we love the vision, we love the gospel. They come alongside and they help support the university. And over the history from 1975 forward, you'll see that there are years where we're building new things. They come alongside and help. And last year was the record giving in the history of Cedarville University. And in fact, two of the top five years have been the past two years. We had partners in ministry that gave over $13 million to the university to help with scholarships and to help build these new buildings buildings and to help keep your tuition low, help make Cedarville the amazing place that it is. So some of them are not able to be here. Perhaps they're watching online, but would you join me in expressing your appreciation to those partners in ministry who are coming alongside us?
We have a campus master plan, and we're kind of in the middle of this. We've built the dormitory that you see there. It's standing. It's no longer just a yellow blob on that campus map. We've built the Chick-fil-A, and it's standing. It's no longer just a blob on the map. And we've built the civil engineering building. So without any increase in debt, God has allowed us to open up $25 million worth of buildings this year and to be able to eat Chick-fil-A and to have cookies and cream milkshakes every day. I'm not telling you how much weight I've gained since this semester started, but it's all right. I need to go for a run this afternoon. It, it doesn't stop with just those. We actually are on a, a campaign that we will launch next fall. It's in the quiet phase, so it's not a secret, but don't tell everybody about it yet. Your family, you get to know ahead of time. And so we started that to see if we could do a campaign. We began looking at it. We're going to launch that probably next year at the State of the University where it'll be public. So you're getting inside information ahead of time as we continue to try to build some new buildings on campus, like that School of Business building, like that Liberal Arts building. It's not just about buildings. Here's a list of some of the different things that we're trying to accomplish. And what we're trying to accomplish here, you'll see things like student scholarships and affordability, $15 million is what our goal is, and hopefully we'll exceed that and go way beyond it. The Cedarville experience, some mission trips in the academic side, sustainability. We're trying to do a lot to make sure Cedarville stays the amazing place that it is. These are some of the opportunities that we have. But today, I get to announce to you a transformational gift to Cedarville University. You see, we're in the early stages of, you saw that number down there, the 100 million, of what would be the most ambitious and most comprehensive fundraising effort in the history of Cedarville University. We desire to expand our on-campus capacity through housing, to increase scholarships, to strengthen the student experience in athletics, in academics, and in missions. We want to remain sustainable into the future, and none of this is possible without faithful and generous financial partners in ministry, the support of our alumni and friends. In the coming months, you're going to hear more about this, but anytime you embark upon something of this nature that has never been done before, you wonder, is it really possible? At least I do. I, I know I've read of all the miracles in the Old Testament, but sometimes I wonder, God, are you still performing all of those same type miracles today? You wonder, is it really possible? Yet God has demonstrated time and time again through the early stages of this effort that he is faithful and he has brought incredible partners and ministry alongside us. Last year, when we were in the chapel, I was able to share with you the news that Cedarville had just received the largest gift in its history, a $10 million gift for the School of Business, the Scharnberg Business Center, to provide that building. Today, I'm honored to tell you about another transformational gift to the university. This gift is a commitment of, are you ready for it? $12 million. That's, that's not a typo. It really does say $12 million gift from an anonymous giver in support of our campaign. It's given to help build the new buildings in our campus master plan, and this gift will help to ensure that the quality of the buildings on the outside matches the quality of the faculty, the education, and the programs on the inside. We are humble and grateful for this anonymous ministry partner's gift and commitment to Cedarville as we stand together for the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. God continues to provide for Cedarville in ways beyond what we can imagine, and I ask that you would join me in continuing to pray for his favor. Now, more than ever, we may not know what the future holds. We recognize with humility our own weakness. We know that our hearts are fickle and prone to leave the God that we love. 
We recognize that often our sin nature pulls us in ways away from God to create our own idols, to seek out our love of self. And yet we know that through the word of God and through community and through studying God's word, through the grace of the gospel, that we can confess as everyone will one day that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. That through daily walking with him, he is faithful to keep us latched to the cross, holding on to the grace that is coming, holding on to that future hope. So while in humility we know we can't do it ourselves, in hope we look ahead and look beyond to the God that is coming one day, knowing that our citizenship is not of this earth. Our citizenship is of heaven. And from heaven we await the glorious Savior, Christ Jesus the Lord, who will transform this lowly, fickle, sinful, rotten body to be like His glorious heavenly body. And one day we will worship Him forever. And that's the the peace and that's our hope and that's why together in unity we strive for the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. Let's go to the Lord in prayer as we thank him for his great gifts to each of us and to our university. God, you are the giver of good gifts. You are a gracious God, and we thank you for the grace of salvation and for forgiving us of our sins when we are not worthy. God, today we have celebrated many good gifts you have given to this university. And God, throughout the years, through faithful partners, through those who have served so well, we stand on their shoulders. We thank you for them. We thank you for their example to us. We thank you for all that you have done. God, you are a good God, and we are not worthy of your grace. But Lord, today we praise you, we honor you, we give you all the glory and praise for everything that you're doing here. God, help us to serve you so that we'll be worthy servants and stewards of the gospel that you have given to us. For God, you are good. And even when we're tired, and even when we're stressed out, and even when it's uncertain, we know that we can cling to the hope of the gospel and a peace that passes all understanding. So in your name... We worship you, we praise you, and we pray this in Jesus, our Savior's name. Amen. And you are all dismissed. Thank you.